I'll be presenting the results of a systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized control trials uh, that investigated the effect of tree nuts on glycemic control. So this is just disclosure of uh, commercial support. So the project was funded by organizations listed in the program. Um, and also I have been funded by CIHR and BBDC. Uh, I have no relationships with commercial interests, and uh, none of the sponsors had a role in any aspect of the present study. So just to give a bit of background, so uh, as we all may know that cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death globally, and that's shown in this figure from the World Health Organization, showing that the 10 leading causes of death in the world, and showing the 10 leading causes of death in the world in the year 2012. Cardiovascular disease has also been shown to be a major cause of death in individuals with diabetes. And so these are two figures that were adapted from a study by Hafner et al. that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in just over a decade ago, showing that in comparison to people without diabetes, people with diabetes uh, have a higher incidence of heart attacks. And um, following after the year, the first year of a heart attack, um, they have a higher uh, mortality rate. Tree nuts have also been shown to be uh, inversely associated with cardiometabolic risk. So just in the last year alone, there have been four uh, systematic reviews and meta-analyses of prospective cohorts that have been uh, published, um, which have shown that tree nuts are inversely associated with cardiovascular disease, uh, diabetes, and all-cause mortality. Tree nuts have also been recognized for their health benefits. So uh, there have been two qualified health claims granted by the FDA that have shown, that have been based primarily um, on their LDL cholesterol lowering effect. Um, they've also been included in heart association guidelines, such as the American Heart Association and the Canadian Cardiovascular Society um, for the management and prevention of diabetes. But the question is, is are there benefits of tree nuts beyond the LDL cholesterol lowering benefit or effect? Um, so when we look at tree nuts in the Diabetes Association guidelines, there are no specific recommendations for tree nuts alone. Um, in the Canadian Diabetes Association guidelines and the American Diabetes Association guidelines, they recommend dietary patterns that include tree nuts, but like I said, no specific recommendations of tree nuts alone. And in the European Association for the Study of Diabetes, uh, they only mention them in a comment on how, that they have high uh, antioxidants and that this may be protective against cardiovascular disease. So some of our work has tried to address this and so just in the last year we've uh, published two systematic reviews and meta-analyses of randomized controlled trials. The first one uh, looking at the effect of tree nuts on glycemic control specifically in individuals with diabetes. Uh, we showed a significant lowering in hemoglobin A1C and fasting, fasting glucose. And the second meta-analysis looked at the effect of tree nuts on metabolic syndrome criteria. And in this meta-analysis, we showed uh, that there was a significant lowering in triglycerides and fasting glucose. So this led to the rationale of the current project, uh, which was to synthesize the evidence on which recommendations are based for the metabolic benefits of tree nuts beyond uh, LDL cholesterol lowering, specifically on glycemic control outcomes in all comers. So to expand on the first meta-analysis that I uh, touched on, and so not just to focus on individuals with diabetes, but uh, with other health statuses. Uh, so just to get into the methods, so uh, just to state this, the objective, it's to pull the effect of tree nuts on glycemic control from randomized controlled trials in all comers. And this project was part of a larger project that looked at other cardiometabolic endpoints. We followed the Cochrane Handbook for systematic reviews of interventions and uh, reporting followed the PRISMA guidelines. We, f we searched four different databases as well as manual searches. Um, we, registered, we registered our study on clinicaltrials.gov and our search terms followed the PICO framework. We were interested in four main outcomes, so hemoglobin A1C, fasting glucose, fasting insulin, and home IR. 
Um, and, and these are the eligibility criteria. So for a study to be included in our meta-analysis, it had to be a randomized control trial conducted in humans with a follow-up duration greater than or equal to three weeks. There had to be a TreeNet intervention in the treatment arm, and there had to be an isocaloric comparison between the treatment and the control arm, and they had to report outcome data on at least one of the four outcomes that I listed above. So once we've identified studies from our database search, we look through them first based on title and abstract. If they don't meet our eligibility criteria, we exclude them. And the remaining studies undergo full article review. And then again, if they don't meet our eligibility criteria, we exclude them, which leads us with the final studies to be included in the meta-analysis. So once we have these final studies, we start extracting the data using uh, something called a performa. Uh, we have two independent reviewers that extract data on the following. And the two independent reviewers also assess the study quality using the Halen methodological quality score. And we also, they also assess the risk of bias using the Cochrane collaboration tool for assessing risk of bias. And then lastly, for our statistical analyses, for our primary pooled analyses, we use a generic inverse variance method using random effects models. Our heterogeneity analyses, the significance is tested by Cochrane skew and quantified by I-squared, and all of these are done on <coughs> Review Manager. And then in order to explore sources of heterogeneity, we conducted a priori subgroup analyses on the following subgroups listed here. And we also conducted publication bias analyses using visual inspection of funnel plots as well as Eggers and Beck's tests, and all of these are um, conducted on Stata software. So to get to the results, <clears throat> so we identified more than 1,700 reports, and after uh, reviewing title and abstract, we excluded majority of those, um, whoops, and that left us with 88 reports that were reviewed in full, two-thirds of which were excluded, which left us with 32 trials included in the final meta-analysis. Uh, these are just some of the trial characteristics. So we had over 1,600 participants. Uh, they were middle-aged. 44% were obese, most of them had metabolic syndrome criteria or diabetes, uh, more than half were less than 12 weeks duration, uh, majority were considered to be of poor study quality based on the Halen methodological quality score, and the median nut intake was around 52 grams per day. So to get to the primary analyses. So this is our forest plot for hemoglobin A1C. We found a non-significant reduction in hemoglobin A1C with significant heterogeneity. For fasting glucose, we found a significant reduction with significant heterogeneity. For fasting insulin, similarly, we found significant reduction with significant heterogeneity. And then lastly, for home IR, similar findings, significant reduction with significant heterogeneity. Uh, so in terms of our subgroups, I'm only going to be presenting the significant ones, and I'm going to go through them fairly quickly for the purposes of time. Um, so these were our subgroup analyses for hemoglobin A1C. We found significant effect modification for baseline hemoglobin A1C, as well as for absolute fiber intake, and additional subgroup analyses uh, confirmed the a significant effect modification by baseline hemoglobin A1C levels. Uh, for subgroup analyses for fasting glucose, we found a significant effect modification for follow-up duration. We didn't find anything for fasting insulin, so for our subgroup analyses for home IR, we found significant effect modification for follow-up duration as well as study quality, and uh, further subgroup analyses showed a significant effect modification for absolute fiber intake. Uh, so next to the discussion, so some of the limitations of this meta-analysis. So majority of the trials were considered to be of poor study quality according to the Halen methodological quality score. Um, more than half were of short duration. Uh, there was evidence of moderate between study heterogeneity and the overall primary analyses for fasting insulin, which were not explained by any of the a priori subgroup analyses. There was evidence of publication bias in the pooled analyses for fasting insulin and home IR, which I did not show for the purposes of time. And a portion of the trials did not focus on glycemic control endpoints as a primary outcome. So just to summarize and conclude, so pooled analyses of 32 trials show that a median tree nut intake of 52 grams per day over a median duration of nine weeks significantly reduces fasting glucose, fasting insulin, and home IR in all comers. 
Although significant lowering was not seen for hemoglobin A1C, the direction of the effect favored tree nuts. Uh, subgroup analyses suggest that the greatest benefits were seen in terms of hemoglobin A1C uh, for individuals who had baseline hemoglobin A1C levels greater than 7% and absolute fiber intakes of, that were greater than 25 grams per day for fasting insulin for those trials that had a longer follow-up duration and for home IR, again, trials that had a longer follow-up duration and higher study quality and for some reason lower absolute fiber intake. But I didn't go through these results in detail for the purposes of time. And lastly, based on the limitations, there is need for longer, larger, higher quality trials. And that concludes my presentation. I'd just like to acknowledge uh, my lab members. Thank you.